Bhupinder Kumar, a postdoc researcher at the LBI DHP. Um, before joining us here, he has received his PhD at the DTU uh, in Denmark uh, and has worked on data gathering, data analysis for digital health, and also developing platforms for digital health research uh, for quite some years. So we're very happy to have you in general, and also in particular for the talk tonight. Uh, that's set for the next few minutes. Uh, Devin, the, the stage is yours. Um, please go ahead. So thank you, Jen, for your introduction. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good evening for those who are joining us from from uh, Europe or, and and uh whatever this time is there for you uh so uh i'm a postdoc uh, at uh, lbi uh, and today we i'm, I'm going to present uh, uh result of one, one of our work which was named as a smart pa basically we were trying to understand how uh, let me share my screen so we were trying to understand how this uh, ecologically momentary assessment can help us uh, uh predict the, the physical activity. So just a quick background on uh, how the physical in, inactivity has a tremendous, uh, you know, uh, contribution to the healthcare uh, and some, some statistics from the World Health Organization. Around five, five, 500 million people uh, with non-communicable diseases are uh, caused by uh, physical inactivity. And it is annually adding to the, around 27 billion uh, healthcare cost. And in one of the recent study, uh, even showed that the uh, people people with less physical activity are likely to get more infected with the COVID and high risk of of, of dying. And in particularly uh, in cardiovascular uh, health, it has a severe risk of of, of it has a, has severe cardiovascular uh, risk, risk 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 factor as much as thirty five percent. There have been a lot of um, a lot of work in this area to, to try to uh, try to notify people, try to motivate people for uh, doing more and more physical activity based on passive sensing work. But that has been uh, that work has, has not met the uh, you know that has limitations in terms of of over notifying the user and which in, in turn leads to to uh, notification overload and annoying user for uh, using uh, using this sort of uh, intervention interventions in, in in long term and the usage of this sort of service go, goes down over over a period of time time so instead of passive sensing which is like you know sensing through mobile or without user in, intervention uh, we th th the active um, uh, ecological momentary assessment has come up as a handy tool to to uh, uh, for 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 uh, improving the physical physical activity so for this study we, we we were trying to see first of all how well ecological momentary assessment can help us predict the the, uh, the physical activity or intervention and if they can then the uh, then how to how to, how do we go about designing the study and what questions to ask in an in an ema because e even if we use in ema the the, the problem uh, of of overload is always there. So how how many questions to ask? What questions to ask? And so that is always an intriguing question in, in in this. So for this, we designed a study which is we named as a smart PA, and uh, we tried to come up with the so first first question was how, which questions to ask and how to frame these questions. Uh, we use the we 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 guided our EMA questions based on psychological theories, um, like most prominently health action process. Uh, approach theory and then which included the HEPA, HEPA items, uh, namely intention, self-efficacy planning, and then PANA scores, which relates to the mood, questionnaires related to mood, and then stress uh, stress questionnaires and sleep quality and sleep duration. Uh, so in, in total, so uh, all, uh, like combining these, there were around 40, 40 plus uh, question, EMA questionnaires that were initially designed for the study. And then the uh, these questionnaires were delivered to the, the participants uh, four times a day uh, of uh, of an interval of four hours, and then they were asked to respond uh, about these questions. And the study lasted for around four, no, three weeks, uh, and a total thirty nine sub subjects uh, took part in this study. And after the data collection, uh, we tried to to do the data cleaning uh, for this. And as as usual, the case with all 
studies involving uh, like uh, manual manual questions so there was not much compliance rate and we, we thought of dropping the questionnaires which were not filled uh, which has less than 40 percent of compliance rate and after the data cleaning process we end up ended up having 24 uh, features uh, which we thought of using in the in the model building process and 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 we we, we use the like traditional machine machine learning models to begin with uh, to see how well they perform and in, in general or uh, AUC scores were used for evaluation of the model as we 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 we, we, sh we saw that uh, during the data cleaning process there were a lot of uh class imbalance in in in, in the data set and this is a result for uh for of AUC scores for for these models and uh different models and you see the exibus came uh really really outperformed the others uh in in this space uh and here are the some scores so so this is like five fold cross validation scores on all the uh, all the six models that we tried and exibus and uh, uh random forest are like in the same range in the in, the, in, the, in that um in the cross validation stage stage and also in on the test set so uh, and and since we had a, a data imbalance problem we also tried to uh, use the the systematic uh, minority or sampling techniques however uh, we, we saw that it only improves the the AUC scores only on test set and not on the, on, on the training set and validation set and not on the test set so finally we decided to drop the idea of uh, using the the uh, or sampling technique for, for for the further analysis uh and and uh, after after we uh, like found out that okay which model works the best and then we, we thought of uh, uh, understanding the which features actually help uh in, in prediction and the uh, the idea behind this was that we want to try to get to the least number of features for for a, for a considerably good prediction so this is uh the AUC score uh, with a different number of features. So, for example, we use just one feature uh, here, and we are able to achieve 82, uh, 82 of AUC score. And then, as we as we increase the two uh, the, the number of features, we saw that, that it maximizes around uh, fifteen features. But with just four features, we we were able to uh, with the four features, we were able to achieve the eighty five percent of AUC score. Uh, and then in, in the, on the on the right hand side, so this shows the 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 value uh, shape value graph, which basically in, basically depicts how each feature is contributing in in the prediction uh, in the prediction of the model. Like uh, the prediction power each feature contributes to to the model. And as you see, the the self efficacy uh, questionnaires have a more more uh, prediction power uh, to add more prediction power to the model uh and yeah so we we, we found out that taxi boost has has, a, has achieved the considerable uh, amount of uh, AUC score and with just four features we can uh, achieve 84 which means in in a way it signifies that we don't have to ask the, all those 40 questions remember we begin with the with the set of 40 questions and then we bought, like in the end we conclude that just four features including this uh, one questionnaire from stress and self self efficacy, efficacy and planning are good enough so we don't have to uh annoy user with with the like a uh, more number of e e e emas so yeah that's that was one of the conclusion and from from a, from a practical point of view this 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 shows that we could uh build something around uh around this uh emas because it's very very uh like a practical nobody's going going to uh, like uh, answer 40 questions if you if you if you want to to use those many number of features so in the end i think this 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 study gave us uh, uh really insights into which features to focus on and the subsequently we will try to uh, use these features into our next study to see how how well this uh, it performs in the the how well the model performs in in, in the study so yeah, thank you very much if you have any questions i would be happy to Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much, Devinda, uh, for that presentation uh, on machine learning for um, predicting physical activity based on ecological momentary assessments. 
also a complex topic uh, that is sort of the curse uh, with a data science topic uh, at many times. Um, complex in other ways than the topics we heard on uh, before. I, I can still encourage the audience um, to raise your hand uh, or ask questions using the Q&A feature, um, if you like, um, about uh, this talk. And we do have a question uh, from the audience, uh, from Dr. Hashita Promote, who I will now um, briefly allow to talk. Uh, so please go ahead and ask your question if you like. Hi, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. thank you. I think it's a great presentation from the Mr. Kumar. Yeah, I have a question. I mean, uh, when you are uh, doing this uh, study, uh, what will be the uh, control study? I mean, control group. Uh, how you uh, do the control group to get the same uh, results? I mean, because this is the this is directly involved in the human uh, interactions and the human uh, uh, emotions kind of things. Because that uh, these the things we need to assess through some control process. So, what will be that? Uh, what will be the that process? Yeah. Yeah. Thank uh thank you dr pramod for this uh, this question i think we, we thought thought about this in uh, as in so this in this study was initially focusing on a trying to to see if emas are, are uh, how effective they are basically so we didn't know when we started this so we didn't know that how effective they would be and if they are then which questions to ask because in, in the starting we started with the 40 40 plus questions and then then for a practical purpose they are not enough so then so that was a main focus for study but i i, I understand your point of, uh, in terms of reproducibility how i think it would be challenge ch ch challenging enough uh, to see that it is reproducible uh, we need definitely need a larger study in in a, in a larger uh, you know population to see that the model we build is more ro robust uh, in that sense but as i said the initial focus of this was a to c just to get a sense of how how effective it would be and also then then to see which features are of more uh, of, of, are of more importance so that we can run a larger study with with least like you know keeping the user experience in mind uh, yeah yeah okay thank you thank you very much thank you for asking the question as well and uh, we do have another question from one of our panelists uh mark van gills uh please go ahead and ask your question if you like yep so thank you for your very nice nice presentation i uh, just just one question so you have been using them the area under the curve as a, as a kind of uh, guideline for for looking at the performance mm -hmm. but eventually of course if you implement you need to to choose one point on that curve to, at some moment so what what's from your viewpoint what is more important there is it that the sensitivity or, or specificity or do you have a minimum value for the sensitivity that you need to to adhere to or what's what's the the yeah. that we are looking for yeah i think we we, we discuss uh about this as in as to where to put put the cutoff uh to be honest what, what is good so this is a very subjective thing so what is good enough is it good like is 80 84 percent good enough or 86 percent or to and to achieve that you know a user with like let's say a few more questions so this is an ongoing discussions that we still have in this project and subsequently the steps that we're going to take from this as to where to put put the cutoff um, put the cutoff uh, so if you have any suggestions we would be like you know uh, happy to to take take on this because this is very subjective and, and we we need to hit, uh, like see with the trial and error as in uh, how how many uh, what is a like good cutoff uh, but we think that at least with the, so in, in terms of sensitivity and, and specificity i think it's it's good like um, for a long term study if, if if the user sees that they are un annoyed too much then i think for a for a for a uh, for long term effect or long term usability, it would be a little bit uh, putting the users down. I think to keeping that in, in in mind, we would be trying to be more accurate than than uh, like trying to be more precise. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. good complex balancing, and I think there's an interesting meta perspective here that is not usually taken. Usually, you try to optimize a model for optimal performance, but here's a trade-off with human interaction. Each yeah, yeah. human interaction. So that's a really interesting added perspective. 
Um, right, we have time for one more question. And we do have one more question uh, from one of our audience members in writing. Christoph is asking, you use many different models, methods. Um, has a separate feature engineering been done for each method? And uh, if so, how extensive was it? Uh, so we did we did the feature engineering uh, not to model specific. The feature engineering was initially to to reduce the just a second uh, to reduce the, the the features which were has less less compliance. I think that was main focus uh, of the of the feature engineering because we don't want to do too much data data augmentations and then then like that was would uh, add natural bias to the model so that was like primary thing that we we involved in the feature engineering as to to see whether the, if the data compliance is not then just uh, remove those features altogether yeah right i hope that uh, gives some insight into the question of course we can always be approached about these projects in, in writing as well um our researchers are usually happy to meet over a coffee if anybody is interested in taking things further so thank you for the presentation again um devinda virtual round of applause as well um and um now